we finished with the pegboard toy and we've added the triangle. So now we're going to uh, create the, <coughs> excuse me, the mallet. And it gives you this profile to start with. So we're going to go ahead and draw that profile. And we're going to revolve it around this line or this axis right here. And we'll, we'll start by drawing this and then we'll add dimensions in later. I believe it gives you dimensions further down as you go. And as you go down further, you do see that there are some dimensions here. And we'll talk about those after we've drawn this basic shape. So by now, you should be able to make this yourself. Um, so you know, I'll, I'll uh, narrate some of this uh, as I go through it. Obviously, we'll start with a new standard IPT. A 2D sketch. Now we have to think about the uh, natural position of this. If you look, you can see it's standing up like this. So I want to draw this profile on my XY plane and I'll revolve it in, uh, in that such a way. So we'll start it here. And I will just pretty much just start with a sketch like this. I'll just kind of toggle back and forth. I want to come down with some lines there. Now this one, if you click and hold, you can draw a perfect arc. Depends on which quadrant you come out of. I messed up there, so I'll just redo it. So if you come out the wrong quadrant like that, you just have to come out this way. So I'll come this way and then down. Yeah, or you could come this way and then down, and it brings the arc the other way. I'm, I'm clicking and holding, keep that in mind. And then you're just back in your regular line feature. So go back and check this, and that pretty much looks the same. So now we just need to add some dimensions. So right there, we're given some dimensions. I can see that it basically is telling us that it's 0.875 from the center out and it's 1.5 from the from the end here down to the center. So I can assume that's three inches total. I can dimension from here to here. I can go three inches with that. Now that that might throw lots of stuff out of whack. Um, so I might want to leave that first. Dimension this to my 0.875 and see what happens. Make this three inches. Zoom out a little here. Now obviously those are way too small. So let's see if we can figure out some other dimensions from here. giving us anything here. So you notice it does say one and three quarter inches in diameter by three inches long. And then if I remember correctly, it doesn't give you specific dimensions here that you have to follow you know it gives you some basic things to follow along but essentially 
this right here, this arc, this line here, this distance here can be kind of whatever you want it to be, or essentially whatever you want it to be. <clears throat> so I'm going to just go ahead and zoom in here, and I'll make this a quarter of an inch. Let's see how that looks. Um, and for me, it doesn't look that bad. So I'll come down here and I'll make this a quarter of an inch. That doesn't look that bad. Now, the only thing that looks off to me is the, the arc. <clears throat> so I can change that by, by clicking on the arc and dimensioning each one. Or I can change that by clicking on this line and dimensioning it, and that will change our arcs uh, a little bit as well. I look here and I just kind of get an idea, like if I made that a quarter of an inch, you know, what would that be? That looks roughly like, you know, an inch and a half, inch and a quarter maybe. So I'm out here and I'll start with an inch and a half and see what see what it looks like. <coughs> Excuse me. That doesn't look too bad. I'm going to change this. Let's see what that is. That's uh, 0.447. So let's change that to 0.3 and see what that looks like. That doesn't look too bad. Now, you definitely have to have these two match. So what I want to do there is escape out of my dimension tool and dimension them to be the same. So i got to delete this. And then dimension this to be 0.3 as well. And then I can leave that whatever it is. Uh, if you dimension it, it's going to bring up a, an error, obviously, telling you that you are over constraining the sketch. Because if you have this arc, this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, and this arc all dimensioned, then that has to be one dimension. So I'll finish the sketch. <clears throat> And I will revolve that profile. It's already chosen it for us, so it already wants us to choose the axis. Choose that. And I click OK. The, the preview looks good to me, so I'll click OK. If you didn't like the way that the head of the hammer looked before you hit OK when you're seeing the preview, you'd go back. If you wanted, like, um, geez, this arc here looks too too steep to me go back and change your your arcs and you make them look different i'm going to say that that's just fine so i'm going to continue on if we scroll down here we see it wants us to make a work plane on the yz plane and we're doing all this because we have to put our mallet handle into this hole right here. So what they're going to tell us to do is place a uh, center point right here in the middle of it. And then we're going to use the hole feature and we're going to apply these statistics to our, our hole. So I will create a sketch. scratch that we're going to do a work plane tangent over here so I'm going to click the YZ axis and then if I bring my mouse over here you'll notice it's kind of showing you a preview if I click right now the work plane will go tangent to my circle or my cylinder on that side if I bring my mouse over here you can see if I click now my, my work plane will be tangent on the other side well, since we want to work, you know, we want to see the side we're working on, I'll click there. And now it's perfectly tangent, which means it's only touching one point way on that edge there, which is fine. Now I'll put my sketch plane on this work plane. You have to click on the edge. Notice if I put go in the center of the work plane, it doesn't highlight. So I have to actually click on the edge of the work plane. And it turns it to the side, and you can still work like that. But if you want to look uh, at it the, in what we consider normal, you just click that rotate right there and it rotates it back 90 degrees. I'm going to put my center point, which is right here, in the exact center 
of that, and you can barely see it because it's on the origin, but it's there. Finish the sketch, and now you definitely see it. And now I use the whole feature, and you're going to notice it's probably going to select that automatically because it's the only center point there. The whole feature uses any center points that you have, so it selects it automatically. And now I just have to go back to that page and apply the statistics and the measurements accordingly. So there's a couple ways to do this. You can read what's here. If you don't understand what's here and where to put it here, you can zoom in and look at this stuff here. So my 0.875 drill depth, that's that dimension right there. And you can see that it's showing you the depth of the hole, essentially. Over here, the tap depth is the depth of the threads, which are right here. And then my 5 eighths of an inch size is down here. So to give you another view, I'm just going to zoom in. Okay, so I look here, and I want to match all these. So I'm going to put 0.875 here, and put 0.625 there. Let's go over and take a look. So notice none of this, this is all grayed out down here. And that's because it's waiting for me to choose a tapped hole or a threaded hole, which is right there. If I hold my mouse there, I'll see that. So I click tap. And I want to make sure that I do <clears throat> all the same dimensions. You notice, it's, again, I'm missing a window here. So you have to ask yourself, why are you missing that window? It doesn't look like it does over here. Oh, termination here says distance. So when I go here, My termination says through all, and that's you can see in the picture it's going all the way through. So I switch that to distance, and now you can see that mine ends at a, at a certain point. And that number is 0.875, and let's take a look at that tab, that threaded depth or the tapped depth, and that is 0.625. Check to make sure everything here. My drill bottom is angled you can also have a flat bottom but i believe we have it angled here and it is it's still angled 118 degrees is the same there i've got it on distance tab and si unified screw threads there it is and i want to choose five eighths that's where this is coming from right here my five eighth size 11 unc is just the unified national course in other words it's a coarse thread as opposed to a fine thread and it's 0.625. So if I go here and I go down to 0.625, notice 5 eighths, 11 UNC shows up automatically. And full depth is not checked because we only want to go 0.625 inches. If I wanted to go full depth, I could check that and it would take that box away and it would just thread it the entire way. Right hand thread, it's already on right hand thread. Class 2B, what do we have over here? They have 2B. So everything is all set. We can select OK. And you notice that you get a hole and that it's it's it has the appearance of threads. And I'm just going to right click on the work plane and uncheck the visibility. So I'm not deleting it, it's still there. I'm just turning it off so it does it's kind of not in the way. And I'll save this file. Save it as a mallet head. close it for now and I'll open a new standard IPT. I'll create a sketch. And again, uh, we got to think about how we're going to make this. I'm going to just do a circle and extrude it and I want it to be on the same plane as kind of. So I want to go this way because I want it to go into the, the uh, mallet head kind of in this fashion. So I'm going to start on this YZ plane. Again, you notice it kind of rotated around there, and you can you can tell because up here the, the word right is not correct. <clears throat> so I rotate it 90 degrees. I make my circle. So we'll put a dimension on there. And the question is, what is the dimension? I got to go back to my Word document and check it out. And my Word document says that my dimension is five eighths of an inch in diameter and eight inches long. 
to make that five eighths of an inch, which makes sense because that was the size of my hole. When I put it in the mallet head, I finished the sketch and I extrude this eight inches. Go back. It wants us to place a 0 0.0625 chamfer on each end. So I'll go and do that. Chamfer here and here. And I gotta make that 0 0.0625. Then I can put that, that chamfer angle in here. I can also go up here and I can put that in there. Notice it's changed because I typed it in down there. Either spot will work. Click apply, cancel. I'm just going to wheel that around, make sure I got both sides, and I did. Go back here, and it wants us to place a thread on one end to match the threads of the mallet head. And then it says click save. Now it doesn't tell us what we should do for threads, so we have to figure that out. So I'm going to put this end in my mallet head, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to choose the thread option. And I'm going to choose this face right here. And notice, I don't want to do full length. So I'm going to uncheck that. Go back here. I notice that it's only part of the way. And if we remember how deep our hole was, uh, we're going to put those threads the same length of the depth of our hole. And if you don't remember, you just go up here. And the whole depth is right here. So I will make it 0.875 for my threads. So right here, the length, you go 0.875, and you could, I would even allow my students to use a hole depth or a, a tap or thread depth rather of, uh, of the 0.625, that would be acceptable as well. I really wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, take points off or, or we'd get too picky on that there at all. Hit apply, cancel, and notice how I put it on the wrong end. You know, that, not necessarily the wrong end, but what that means is when I go to do my assembly, I'm going to have to spin this around like this to insert that correctly. So in order to avoid doing that, I'm going to right-click, Edit Feature, and you can choose which, which end you want to do that on. Usually, I'm going to right click and delete this. And I'll just do, it, do the thread again. Notice how it's giving me my preview there. And then when I go down here, it's giving it there. So it all depends on where you click when you, when you choose the original face, which is there. Notice that I got to change this again 0 0.625, 4 0.875, no offset. And I'll click OK. Now, if I click this button, it should switch it to the other end. Maybe it switches it to a different face. It might, might switch the direction. So it might make the threads go that way. Hit apply. Cancel. And that's pretty much it for this mallet head. Or excuse me, the hammer mallet handle. So I'll save that. that file we're going to open a standard assembly I'll insert both files we'll insert the mallet head first then the handle we're going to use a simple uh, <clears throat> insert constraint places it for you, so just go right back up and hit place again. And my, mine's just telling me that, that give me that error because I have the educational version here at my house. So 
So this one doesn't place it for you, so you have to actually physically click to place it once. So you can hit Constrain, we'll select Insert. I'll choose this end to insert into this end. Hit Apply, and Cancel. Okay, and I didn't add any color to this. Uh, if you want to add color, I would recommend you have your, your students add it. I mean, obviously I would add the color to the uh, part files. Um, one thing you may have noticed, I didn't do the chamfer on the edges here. Uh, I actually forgot. So I can double click on this and it goes to the handle out. And now I'm working just in this file. And I can put my chamfer on there if I wanted to. Realistically, you could put anything you want on there. You could do a fillet if you wanted to. I'll just apply the chamfer like it had before. And uh, if we go in here, we can check out what it wanted initially for that chamfer. Uh, 1 16th inch chamfer. The 1 slash 16. And I just hit enter. And there's my chamfer. You want to just hit right click and finish the edit. And they both pop back. And then I can save that as my mallet. You can go ahead and you can insert the mallet assembly into uh, another assembly file with the, the pegboard toy. And then you would have all of your files all in one.